Okay, let's take a closer look at atoms. Atoms are the building blocks that make up everything. All stuff, everything. And to get, to, to get around that, I've got some drawings here. This first one here is table salt, all right, a solid. Then I've got water, which is a liquid. And finally, I've got oxygen gas. All right. And what you're looking at here with these three pictures, all right, is if we could zoom in zillions and zillions and zillions of times, and if we could look at these closely enough, we'd be able to see that the atoms are these tiny little building blocks that make up everything, all right? Now, atoms aren't really these colored little dots that we see here. Um, but it's a good way to think about them, and it's usually how we will draw them um, when we're learning about them. Now, atoms are super tiny. They're so tiny, it can be hard to really get your head around how tiny they are. So if we were to look at this piece of paper here, our normal piece of paper, and we are to turn it up on our side here, and we look at this little bit here, how thin this, incredibly thin this piece of paper is. Now, Atoms are so small, it would take one million atoms lined up in a row, lined up next to each other in a row to make up the width of that or the thickness of that piece of paper. That's how small atoms are. Now, we want to, now what we want to do um, is look even closer at an atom. So let's take one of these atoms here um, and zoom in even more so we can see what's inside of it. So what I've got here um, is a magnified view of one atom. It's not a perfect representation of what an atom would look like, but it's close enough for now. It's just it's what we need to get our head around what an atom looks like. Now check this out. The atom itself is made up of these smaller things. Now we said that atoms are so tiny and they're the building blocks of all stuff and yet they are made up of even smaller building blocks. Um, and we call these things subatomic particles. Now in the centre of the atom is the nucleus. All right? And the nucleus is made up of um, two tiny particles called protons and neutrons. Now, the protons I've drawn in these red circles and the neutrons I've drawn in these blue circles. All right? And the nucleus is here, right in the middle of the atom. And then on the outside of the atom, there are these black circles that we are using to represent electrons. All right? And the electrons, you can see, are connected to these sort of, I don't know, oval paths. Um, and, and I've drawn these in to show that the electrons are constantly moving. They're flying around the, the nucleus of the atom at, a, at an incredibly high speed, all right? Where the nucleus stays in the middle of the atom. It's planted, does not move. So the nucleus always stays in the middle. But we've got these electrons. They're flying around everywhere, you know, sort of like in these oval paths. Now, electrical charge is really important when we're talking about... Um, atoms for a number of reasons. Now protons have a charge of plus one. So all of our little protons here, they have a charge of plus one. Now one electron has a negative charge, so a charge of one minus. All right? And our neutrons here, they don't have a charge at all. And things that we describe generally something that doesn't have a charge, we call them neutral. So we can think of neutrons um, as being neutral, neutral neutrons. All right. Now, positive and negative charges, as we know, they attract. So if we get um, a, a negative and a positively charged magnet, we put them together. They come together because they attract. Positive and negative charges attract. All right. And that's it. That has important consequences for how this atom here works. All right. We said that electrons are flying around, you know, buzzing around, flying around at an incredibly high speed, flying around 
the nucleus of the atom. So what's actually stopping them from just flying away into open space and um, be free? All right. Well, the reason why is because the negatively charged electrons all right, are, are attracted to the positively charged um, protons in the atom, all right, so in the nucleus. All right, and this attraction stops them from flying away. All right, but the electrons are moving so fast that they're not able to actually pull in here and dock with the protons and the neutrons. They're moving so fast, yep, that they're they still spin around, all right? But you know, there's enough of a, an electrical um, attraction there or a, an, a, an attraction between the positive and the negative to stop them from flying away. But they're moving so fast, they come, can't come in and actually dock with the protons and the neutrons, all right? Now, sometimes people might ask, well, neutrons, they don't have a charge. Why are they important at all? Well, it seems that neutrons help keep all of the particles in the nucleus strongly connected to each other. So without them, you know, maybe they'd break apart and we wouldn't have the nucleus there at all. Now, electrical charge is important. Something else that's important with atoms is what their mass is, how much they weigh. So in order to figure that out, we have to look at the mass of the various things that make up the atom. So, you know, our protons, neutrons and electrons. So let's have a look at that. Now the proton and the neutron are very, very similar in size and weight. And if we were to bring in the, the mass or the weight of one of those protons on neutrons, this is what it is. Look how big this number is, or small this number is. Here's our zero, here's our decimal point, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 zeros, and then 167 grams. All right? So let's look at how tiny that number is. All right? Another way that we can actually write that is in our scientific notation, which is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. That is tiny. It doesn't matter how you write it, um, that is a tiny number. So scientists thought, well, that's just, that's just too hard. How are we gonna work out the mass of these things? So they came up with, um, they came up with a unit themselves that would describe the weight of an atom or the weight of particles within an atom. And they came up with something called 1AMU. So this is the mass of our proton or neutron. So they came up with something called 1AMU. So they said one proton or one neutron weighs about 1AMU, so one atomic mass unit. And now that's a lot easier to to use than you know this this number here. All right, so one proton, one neutron, they both weigh around about one atomic mass unit, one AMU. Now electrons, on the other hand, are much, much, much smaller than a proton or a neutron. So if I was to bring in the mass of one electron, they are 0 0.000549 AMU. So they are tiny in comparison to um, a proton or a neutron. And for this reason, when we're talking about the mass of atoms, which we'll talk about in some later videos, um, we usually add up the protons and the neutrons to find out how many AMUs that atom weighs. And then we usually don't even worry about the electrons because the electron weighs so little, all right? 0.00549 AMU. So we don't even worry about the, the electrons when we're talking about the mass or the weight of an atom. Um, it's so it's like if you got on the scales um, to weigh yourself, you wouldn't remove your earrings, you wouldn't remove your ring, because they're so small they don't actually make any difference to the weight anyway. And that's, that's the way that we look at the electrons. They're so small in weight that they just don't actually make any difference to the weight 
of an atom. So when we're talking about the mass or the weight of an atom, we talk about the protons and the neutrons. We don't even worry about um, don't even worry about the influence of an electron. There's just no influence that it has on the weight. Now, I mentioned earlier on in the video, I'll get rid of all of this, that this here wasn't a a fair representation of an atom, and it's not. So this isn't what an atom really looks like, all right? But for our purposes, it's going to be fine. So if we have a look at these things, there's a couple of things that I do want to talk about, though, about the, the, the way that we've drawn this atom here. And the first thing is that the electrons and how they move. Now, I've drawn the electrons here in these perfect sort of oval shapes, and you might think that that's the path that the electrons follow. And, and for us, that's the way we're going to draw it um, going forward. You know, we're going to have them in nice, neat rows um, where they're almost going in a circular uh, motion like this. But it's important to realise that the electrons, they're they don't move like this. They, they're buzzing around, all, all the way around, everywhere. You know, like our quantum mechanical model in the last video, they're buzzing around everywhere, all right? And, you know, they're like hyperactive flies. That's the best way to describe it. But for us, we're going to always draw them in these perfect semicircles. It just makes it easier for us to, um, to look at the way atoms behave later on. Now, the second thing has to do with the size of the nucleus and how far away the electrons are from it. So if we were to take this nucleus here and we were to say that it was the size of a grape, all right, the electrons would be one and a half kilometers away. All right, so we've got an electron, uh, we've got an atom here, or a nucleus of the atom. It's the size of a grape, it's one and a half kilometers away. So what that means is that most of an atom is empty space. All right, there's nothing in between, it's all empty space. Um, so, just to revise some of the terms that we have used um, in the video today, nucleus, nucleus is always found in the middle of the atom and the nucleus consists of protons and neutrons, alright? Protons have a positive charge, neutrons have a neutral charge, they have no charge at all, so each proton plus one, neutron, no charge at all, and then we've got our electrons. All right, electrons have a negative charge, a charge of minus one. All right, um, don't have anything to set for you to read out of the book. Um, for now, uh, it'll be finish off this video, watch the next couple of videos, and then there'll be some more work to do out of the book, and then a quick quiz. All right, see you in the next video. Bye.